Eric, you copy? Yeah, Jim, go ahead. Hey, we've been out to Triangle, and I gotta tell you, we just picked up some really strange LIDAR up there that we're trying to figure out. What do you mean by strange? We got this weird anomaly over the Triangle. What do you think he's talking about? I don't know. Last week, we recorded images of a UAP that suddenly appeared right above the spot that we call the Triangle. So this morning, Eric and I asked Jim Royston and Sam DeRizzo of Autotech to scan the area with their drone-based infrared LIDAR device to see if it could reveal what might have caused that phenomenon. We flew the drone one time, got some very interesting kind of crazy LIDAR data uh, that does kind of confirm some of the things we saw last year. All that recorded? Yeah, we have it recorded and... Uh, I'm gonna send you the data right now, and then we'll come in and take a look at it. Copy that, go ahead and shoot it over, I wanna see it. This is my controller. For the LiDAR? Yes. I called Sam over and had him go ahead and pull out his cell phone is what he's capturing this on. So if you play this, that's right in center, right above the triangle. You'll see as I turn this around, you'll see one, this weird symmetry. It's like a donut floating there. We could turn it, keep it going. Let's look at the different views what you give us. OK, so what the hell is generating these returns? And look how clean the lines are around it. That's what just kind of blew it's my like mind. A, you know, the interesting thing to me is it looks kind of funnel shaped. Whoa. You know, the, the really crazy piece to this is this looks like it could be an extension of whatever that is you saw last year. That bright circle, perfect circle you measured last year on the ground. It's in the same location. Yeah. Yeah. That is just tantalizing, guys. It looks like a dead gum hourglass or, the, you know, the pictures that you see on papers and graphics of traversable Lorentzian wormholes. I mean, think about it. Wow. For much of the last century, Scientists such as Albert Einstein have theorized that wormholes, which are passageways between two distant points in space, could actually exist. And what Jim and Sam have captured on their LiDAR device appears to have the very structure of a theoretical wormhole. Could that be what exists above the triangle? And is that what's causing all these phenomena to happen in this area? I want to catch this thing again. Absolutely. I want us to do whatever it takes to catch that thing again. Yep. This triangle's got us. Yep, we need to load all that in the truck. Yep. After what Jim and Sam showed us on their LiDAR scan, Eric and I wanted to get the team out to the triangle immediately. All right, here we go. We wanted to see if the phenomenon would reappear so we could figure out exactly what it was. You got the plate? Yep. All right. Because rockets have repeatedly helped us observe phenomena on the ranch, our plan was to launch several of them equipped with GPS devices straight up above the triangle and then photograph each launch with high-speed cameras. The goal was to see if we could cause anything to appear that was potentially related to the ring-shaped LiDAR anomaly that Jim Royston had just recorded. Rocket's hot. And while we finished getting ready, Eric headed to a brand new observation post we call the Black Box. It's located southeast of the triangle and it enables him to monitor the live GPS data from each of the rockets as they pass through the area where we detected the strange LiDAR ring. We're armed. Rocket's hot. We'll be launching in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's perfect. What do we got? Oh, wow. Hey, Eric, you copy? Yeah, go ahead, Travis. Yeah, Eric, I'm looking at this trace. It got to about 2,000 feet high, but this is showing it only about 150 feet or something. I'm seeing that. It looks like it headed right towards the exit point of that UAP here from last year. Holy crap. It sure does. That is really weird. Now, we all saw that rocket shoot straight up a couple thousand feet in the air. But the data from the GPS device inside of it showed that at an altitude of 150 feet, it turned northeast toward the face of the nearby Mesa, where last year we saw a UAP exit from that very same spot. 
So could all of this be related to the thing that Jim Royston spotted today on his LiDAR scans? Maybe launching another rocket could get something to happen that would help us find out. All right, everybody be advised, we're about to launch another rocket. In five, four, three, two, one. So Travis? Yeah, go ahead, Eric. Um, the data looks really messed up. I don't know what's really going on above the triangle, but right where we captured new LiDAR images of a ring-like anomaly earlier today, the rockets that we just launched are showing GPS data that doesn't match at all with their actual flight paths. I have no idea what to make of that. That makes no sense. OK, well, we're going to try again. You dang gum right we are. Hey, everybody, be advised. We're going to launch in less than one minute. So we wanted to keep launching rockets up through the triangle to see if whatever was causing this might actually be revealed. You good there? I think so. All right. Okay, we got juice. Five, four, three, two, one. The GPS data from that rocket is wrong, too. It says the rocket didn't go high at all. Look, it just went to the west of the triangle again. Dude. Hey, Eric, it looks like it turned and went west of the triangle. Yeah, I get it. Uh, Travis, this doesn't make any sense. I don't know what we're looking at here. At launch, the GPS data looks nothing at all like the actual trajectories of the rockets. I'm watching them in the cameras. We really need to understand what is happening in this airspace over the triangle. That's crazy right there. Yeah. Hey, Travis. I'm just going to shut down out here and uh, take a look at the data. Copy that. Hey, everybody, that's the last launch. We're going to start breaking down. Thank you, Travis. What are we looking at today, Eric? Well, let me bring up the, the, uh, the camera footage. So this is a single camera looking up this launch tower. You know, this is the post process where we have that embossed effect. And so here you see just immediately after the first rocket yeah. launch, you can see there is something that shows up that it's not our rocket. What is it that we're looking at that's kind of coming out of that thing? Yeah, you're talking about these lobes on the yeah, other side. Yeah, what crap is that? So we've got, we've got this, I'll call it a cylindrical uh, center. Mm -hmm. It's a line. And then we have these two lobes on either side. I don't know what that is. Now, I'll take us back out to the original. So watch as this evolves. OK, so I'm going to go forward one frame. OK. Go forward again. Mm-hmm. Go one more. Whatever this additional feature is on the side of the main body of this thing, and it goes from uh, what would be the aft portion of it to the fore portion of it. Yeah. OK. So At least that's what it looks like to me. It looks like wings. No, I mean, not like, not like bird wings or insect wings. It looks like airplane wings. Folding down. Yes. Mm-hmm. Interesting. One more time. Go one more frame. So look at the top. It's shinier than You're speaking to this yeah, part whatever here. that is. Okay. It seems to be a, a shinier than the rest of it. It has a very defined, rigid edge. Yeah, it seems like it says very consistent. Yeah. So it's got definition. And I don't know that I've ever seen anything exactly like this before. This is in that same time frame. Within a few minutes. You see it over here? Look at that. Oh, that's crazy, man. And then we'll dive in here. All right. Well, I'll tell you, my brain's tell me it's the same object as the previous one, or same type of object. The same class of object. Well, let me move to the next one. So here we have a third instance of it looks similar to the same thing. I think it's the same thing. I don't know what it is. But yeah. It looks like it's the same thing. So we have three uh, videos of the same category of object right after the first launch. But I don't think there's any decision we can make on it right now. Could Eric be right 
that the answers to all the UAPs and other phenomena we've recorded between the Triangle and the Mesa and the East Field might actually be underground? Is there a connection between the ring-like anomaly we've detected on LIDAR and the possible tunnel that was identified by Lunason last year? Okay, well, you know, this has been a great review, so I appreciate you guys sitting at the table with me. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much.